If you are a fan of Yana's Fix My Life like I am on the OWN Network, then I know you just seen a recent episode with Lisa Ray, her mom, and her daughter. And I was very excited about this episode because not only am I from Chicago like Lisa Ray is, but I actually know some people that know her and her sister DeBrat. But in this episode, we found out that Lisa Ray, her mom, and her daughter don't have as close as a relationship as we thought. And we actually heard some things about her father, that he was murdered by his girlfriend, he was a millionaire, a business owner, and had a lot of girlfriends. Now, that they didn't go deep with Lisa Ray and her father, but we are today. So check this out. Hey everybody, this is Geneva of Geneva's Closet Talk Show. Please make sure you like and share this video and subscribe to Geneva's Closet if you haven't already done so right here on YouTube. And you can follow me on Facebook at what? At Geneva's Closet. And you can email me at Geneva's Closet22 at gmail.com. Now Let's get into the news. Look, I have so much information to tell y'all, and I was trying not to make this video too long, but I don't know what to do. I'm trying to give you all the information. I don't know if I've just been intrigued by Lisa Ray because, first of all, I think she's a beautiful woman. And two, she's from Chicago. Three, when I found out that she always had money, that her father was a businessman and he was a millionaire, I was like, really? Then found out he had got killed. And years ago, I went and did some research on it, found out it was by his girlfriend. But I had did minimum research at that time. Then finding out years ago that she was related to DeBrat, that was the sister. And I'm like, what? That's her sister. So what they got the same mama and daddy, then found out they had the same daddy, then was trying to figure out, so was the mom still married to um, Lisa Ray's mom when she met the brat, like what was really going on with that? So now by watching the Iana show and getting just a little bit more information, it made me re-interested and go back and research. And I found out so much stuff that I didn't know, things that I did know and stuff that I had completely forgot all about. So this video is not only going to be about Lisa Ray, her mom and her dad, but some other people that I done found. We're going to talk about the brat. We're going to talk about Lisa Ray's past relationships because I've always been intrigued by that. Why she haven't been able to keep a man as beautiful as she is even though we know looks don't keep a person but it show in the hell helps but just just stick with me people david ray mccoy lisa ray's father was born march 6 1935 and was killed november 12 1988 he was 53 years old ironically the exact same age lisa ray is now this is the first article that i found on this incident and it is dated for november 14th 1988 two days after david ray mccoy was killed and it says chicago had no motive sunday in the slang of a wealthy south side businessman who was found shot to death in the back seat of his car Saturday evening. The body of David Ray McCoy, 52, of 1654 East 92nd Street, was found in the back seat of his 1988 Cadillac at about 8.40 p.m. Saturday, according to the sergeant. Wilson said McCoy was the owner of the Zandabar Motel chain, the Dunes Motel, and several other businesses. McCoy was a paralegic as a result of a gunshot wound that he had suffered many years ago in a home invasion. McCoy's car was found parked in the alley of 87 700 block of South Cornell Avenue, about a mile from his home. The car had been blocking the alley for several hours, and when police were called by residents to investigate, they found the body in the back seat. He had been shot twice in the head. McCoy had been seen by family members about 2 p.m. that Saturday. The motive is a mystery at that time. There were some belongings missing, but he had his jewelry on. McCoy was wearing at least two diamond rings and several gold chains when he was found by police. At that that time they were interviewing family friends and business acquaintances and they said David Ray McCoy did not have a background now just to give you some ages on this timeline Lisa Ray was born September 23rd 67 and Shante Harris aka the brat was born April 14th 74 so in November of 1988 when David Ray McCoy was killed Lisa Ray was 21 years old and the brat was 14 years old they have a seven-year age difference and remember that Lisa Ray's mom said on Iana's Fix My Life that she was married to David Ray McCoy the entire time even when he was killed so we totally see that he definitely cheated on her because at least seven years after she had Lisa Ray Debrat was born. This article was written November 15th, 1988, three days after David Ray McCoy was killed. And I get from this article that the police were speculating 
Um, they were speculating who they think could have killed David Ray McCoy, and it says slain motel owner lent millions. David Ray McCoy was an astute and successful businessman, a self-made millionaire, who in turn lent millions of dollars to others wanting to start neighborhood businesses on the south side of Chicago. Friends and associates said McCoy provided jobs to many in the community. He was an inspiration to young blacks who wanted to be businessmen. And it says, but McCoy, 52, also had a reputation for being tough in his business dealings. Said family and friends told detectives that McCoy was involved in several business-related quarrels before he was shot to death this weekend in the backseat of his 1988 Cadillac. They said there were too many suspects. A lot of people would have a motive based on the arguments he had over business dealings. But it also said an autopsy disclosed that McCoy, who was found slain in the backseat of his car Saturday evening, was shot three times. Because remember in the other article it said twice, nope, shot three times in the head in the front seat of his car and his body put on the floor in the rear seat. It says police found McCoy's wallet near a fast food restaurant and it says there was no money in the wallet, though McCoy routinely carried about $1,000. But we still don't believe that robbery was the motive. Also missing was a 38 caliber revolver that McCoy was known to carry with him for security. He said an automatic weapon found in the car is believed to be the murder weapon. Police said McCoy was a paralegic as a result of a gunshot wound he suffered in 1968 when three bandits invaded the apartment of his sister. According to Klein, McCoy t typically would conduct business in the front seat of his Cadillac because he was unable to move from his car to an office, but they definitely um, characterized him as very astute businessman who lent millions of dollars to neighborhood business people who wanted to open taverns, motels, and other small businesses. Then it went on to name some of his businesses. It says McCoy was an owner of Zanabar Motel and then it named the places then it says that his brother Julius managed several of the motels according to state records McCoy was president or a corporate officer of a firm called Downtown Adjusting Services at 2120 South Michigan he was also the president of Chicago Dunes Motel Incorporated which operates a large motel and then it gives that information West Lane Hotel Corp which operates the Zanabar West Lane Hotel Hotel, and then it says which operates the Marshall Zanabar Hotel and it says um, they always admired Ray because he was a role model not only for handicapped people but black people who thought they were handicapped by their race he became an industrious businessman as a way to deal with his handicap at the time that this article was written detectives had arrested one of the people that McCoy had a quarrel with after finding a pistol and several thousand dollars worth of narcotics in this man's room when they went to question him. They said Charles Joyner was in the process of buying the new King Manor Motel from McCoy, and he was charged with weapons and narcotics violations. Though police have not ruled out Joyner as a suspect, he has not been charged in connection with McCoy's death. Now, this is when we find out what's really going on. Dated November 19th, 1988, one week after David Ray McCoy was shot to death. It says, girlfriend charged in millionaire's death. A quarrel over a high electric bill and who should break the leaves may have been the motive for the slaying of Southside millionaire David Ray McCoy, police said Friday, in announcing the arrest of McCoy's live-in girlfriend and her brother. Police made the arrest after tracing a gun found near McCoy's body to his long Long-time girlfriend Sheila Daniels, 32, of 1654 East 92nd Street. According to police, Daniels told detectives she and her brother shot McCoy, 52, a paralegic three times in the head after she had argued with him. But police officials said the investigation is continuing to determine if there were any financial motives. Charged with murder along with Daniels was her brother Tyrone, 20, of 4344 South Prairie Avenue. After the killing, according According to police, McCoy's body was driven in his Cadillac to an alley in the 8700 block of South Cornell Avenue, where he was found by police Saturday evening. A 25 caliber Beretta, believed to be the murder weapon, was beside him in the back seat. The arrest of Daniels and her brother shocked McCoy's friends and business associates who recalled McCoy's fondness for his girlfriend of more than 10 years. I love Sheila very much, said Donald Roebuck, who owns downtown adjusting services inc a business mccoy helped start he mccoy was very good to that girl she had a car she had everything she wanted 
Mm-mm-mm. Police said the initial phase of the investigation was complicated by allegedly false information Daniels provided to investigators. On September 5th, 1990, almost two years after his death, Sheila Daniels and her brother Tyrone Daniels was found guilty of first-degree murder of the killing of David Ray McCoy. It says the longtime girlfriend of paralegic Southside millionaire was convicted Tuesday night of gunning him down two years ago in his Cadillac. Based on court records, this is actually what happened to David Ray McCoy. At trial, the state presented the following evidence. On November 12, 1988, at approximately 8.40 p.m., David Ray McCoy, a paralegic since 1968, was found dead in his car in the alley near the intersection of 87th Street and Cornell Avenue in Chicago, about a block from his office at 8837 South Stony Island Avenue. His body was curled up in a fetal position on the floor behind the driver's seat, a 25 caliber semi-automatic handgun, later determined to be the murder weapon, was lying next to his head. After his body was removed, two small caliber cases were found in the car. Blood was found on the front seat, armrest, as well as on the body. Two days later, McCoy's wallet was found at McDonald's restaurant located at 1437 East 87th Street, approximately two blocks from the alley where his body was found. The medical examiner recovered two bullets from the back of McCoy's brain and a third bullet from the right side of his face, but was unable to determine the order of shots or if any single bullet caused his death. In Sheila Daniels' statement to court reporter, the defendant stated that on the afternoon of November 12, 1988, she helped McCoy take a bath and get dressed. During this time, they argued approximately 30 to 40 minutes about the gas meter. Tyrone then rang the doorbell and defendant bust him into the house. After McCoy finished getting dressed, he got in his wheelchair, got his gun, which he always carried, and asked for some water. When she returned with a gallon of jug of water, she heard McCoy cursing into the phone and then saw him go into the garage. She then got the gun from her purse, put it in the pocket of her robe, and went to the garage. In the garage, McCoy began cursing at her and calling her names while she helped him into the car. She then gave him the water and began to walk away, but McCoy kept screaming at her and picked up his gun. When she walked back towards the car, he threatened to start kicking her ass and then jumped at her. She became scared and pulled out the gun and shot him once. Tyrone then came in the garage, took the gun, brought her into the house and told her that he would help her get rid of McCoy. She then went to get dressed while Tyrone pushed McCoy over the car seat and shot him with her gun. They then left in separate cars. Tyrone drove McCoy's car and parked it in the alley at 88th at and Stony Island. Tyrone then got in her car, took $1,500 from McCoy's wallet, and left the wallet at a McDonald's restaurant. If I'm not mistaken, I think Sheila Daniels and her brother Tyrone Daniels was sentenced to 80 years in jail. But get this, people, her conviction was overturned due to technicalities in 1995. Now, what technicalities was that? I don't know, because in the midst of that, I end up finding another article dated for January 11th, 1996, because the plot thickens. And this is what it says. Slang in Peel Hill area raises $200,000 question. Now, mind you. This is now eight years, almost eight years after the killing of David Ray McCoy. It says it was strange enough that someone was killed in one of the city's quieter, more regal neighborhoods, Peel Hill, in the middle of the day. But when police arrived at the scene of William Darry's slaying at 2 p.m. Tuesday, they said they found his girlfriend, who was out on bond in another killing, getting ready to leave with a trunk full of money and shoeboxes full of cash, nearly $200,000 in all. Police consider the circumstances is curious, but they said Wednesday that no one had been charged and many questions remain unanswered. Diary 44 had just returned home when he was shot repeatedly in his left side and right thigh, police said. Witnesses told police they seen two masked men fled the scene in a maroon van. The shooting occurred in the 1600 block of East 92nd Street where Diary lived with his girlfriend, who? Sheila Daniels, and who? Daniels' daughter, Stephanie Scott. When police arrived, Daniels and Scott were preparing to leave in Daniels' car, a blue Mercedes-Benz sedan, 
166000 in a box in the trunk, and an additional 25000 or so stuffed in two shoe boxes inside the house. The source of money was not known. Dari owned a Rolls Royce and a new Corvette, but the source of his wealth was not known. Three 9mm shell casings were found near the site of the killing. Daniels and Scott were questioned by Calumet area detectives, but said little on the advice of their attorney and were released. And then it says Dari was killed in the same house where Daniels allegedly shot and killed her former live-in boyfriend, David Ray McCoy, on November 12, 1988. Mm, mm, mm. After that shooting, Daniels allegedly called her brother Tyrone. We know who then came to McCoy and shot him two more times. Sheila Daniels and her brother were convicted of murder, but Sheila Daniels' conviction was overturned in 1995 on a legal technicality. On August 13, 1997, almost 10 years after the killing of David Ray McCoy, it says woman convicted again in slang. Now, mind you, in 1997, this is one year before Players Club came out. Lisa Ray is 29 years old. She's getting her career started. And in 97, we already know DeBrat has met Jermaine Dupri. They done did Functified and all of that. She done got her rap career started. And she's 22 years old. And they are still dealing with this whole retrial and this Sheila Daniels situation because of the killing of their father. And it goes on to say a Southside woman has been convicted for the second time of killing millionaire David Ray McCoy, her living boyfriend in 1988. A jury of nine women and three men returned a verdict of guilty of first degree murder of against Sheila Daniels, 41. Cook County Circuit Court judge set sentencing for September 16th, and the state was asking for the maximum penalty of 80 years, the same term Daniel got in 1990 after her first conviction. The retrial was ordered two years ago by the Illinois Appeal Gate Court, which reversed that conviction for prosecutors' misconduct. Something else I found interesting in this article was that it says Daniel, Sheila Daniels, admitted on the stand that her daughter, Stephanie Scott, no relation to the McCoys, now 20 inherited the house and part of McCoy's fortune after his death. How did she do that? What did McCoy write the daughter into his will? Oh, I know they was just very upset about that. And then it goes on to say she, Stephanie Daniels, and her younger brother Tyrone Daniels, then 20, were convicted in the slaying. She was sentenced to 80 years in prison for firing the first and fatal shot behind McCoy's left ear. He got 60 years for shooting McCoy twice in the forehead. Now, it said that Stephanie Scott, Sheila's daughter, inherited some of his fortune. And I wonder how much was some of that fortune, because if I'm not mistaken, I think I seen something that said that he was worth six to nine million after when he was killed. So mm, I wonder if there's some court documents on that. I don't know how I forgot to mention this, but we all know now that on November 12th, 1988, David Ray McCoy was killed. But over one year later, on December 5th, 1989, Lisa Ray gave birth to her first and only daughter, Kai. So I know that had to been devastating for her that her father was not able to see his granddaughter. That's why she made that comment on Iana Fix My Life about it being important for her to give birth to her daughter because she felt like she had lost one life, which was her father, and gained another life, which was her her daughter Kai. I bet you thought I was done. Nope, not done. There are various reports of motives behind David McCoy's murder, according to the Chicago Tribune, but three of the motives comes from David McCoy's oldest daughters. Yes, he got three older daughters in addition to Lisa Ray and Brad. And those daughters are Jalen Morgan and Cynthia. And guess what, people? I found them. And these daughters came out and they believed that their father was killed because Daniels, Sheila Daniels, found out that she was about to be cut out of his will. And other reports suggest about that whole electric bill and I don't know. I'm starting to think that it may have had something to do with being cut out of the will, too, especially since we end up finding out that her daughter, Stephanie Scott, ended up inheriting the house and some of his fortune. And I'm really interested in finding out what did the daughter inherit. But then again, let's go back a little bit. We found out that at the time that all of this happened, that David Ray McCoy was killed, Sheila Daniels was what? 31, 32 years old, but they had been together for 10 years. And I think David Ray McCoy was killed when he was 53. So that means he was 43 and Sheila Daniels was 22. 
Ooh, we, he liked his young ones. Now, I wonder, now, when I watch Iyana Fix My Life, I remember Iyana saying that Kathy McCoy, which is Lisa Ray's mom, was her elder. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe she's closer to David Ray McCoy's age. But then we have the three daughters, Jalen, Morgan, and Cynthia, their mom, and um, found her mom, found, found their mom too. And she, he was actually married to her because her last name was McCoy. And I'm thinking maybe she was close to around his age too. But then somewhere in there, he liked him a little young tenderonis. Now that's where the brat co mom comes in at. Now we know the black don't crack. But looking at the brat mom, she sure don't look like she about no 60, 70. And at today's time in 2020, if... Um, if David Ray McCoy was still alive, I think he would be 80 something years old. He would be 85 years old. And DeBrat's mom show sure don't look like she's in her 70s or her 60s, at least 20 years from it. She looked like she probably in her 50s. So I wonder, was she one of his little tender, young tenderonies that he messed around with? You know, because I'm pretty sure the ladies liked him because he had money. You know, he had these businesses. He was a millionaire. Did nobody give a damn that he was a paralegic and had been one for 10 years. People was trying to get that money, that denario. So I wonder what really went down with that. It took me two, three days to make this video. So I never actually found Morgan McCoy because I just got tired of searching. And that is supposed to be David McCoy's other daughter, Lisa Ray's and DeBrat's other sister. So with that being said, then I'm assuming that David Ray McCoy had children by four different women. Then that would be Morgan McCoy's mom. Then we have Cynthia and Jalen's mom, Duffy McCoy, Lisa Ray's mom, Kathy McCoy. And then lastly, DeBrat's mom, Nadine Bruce. I don't know about you, but for me, watching Iana Fix My Life, plus the research that I've done on Lisa Ray, her family, and the brat, actually kind of helped me figure out why she may be all over the place with men, but not only her. Why the brat may have also been all over the place, because we have to remember that not only have Lisa Ray had issues as far as men, which now we see can stem from the whole situation with her mother and her father. Because a lot of us would say that Lisa Ray comes off as materialistic. Like it's very important for her man to have a certain amount of money, which isn't a problem because you want your man to have a certain amount of money. It's like the man probably wants his woman to have a certain amount of money and be doing something what they like. But sometimes it comes off as materialistic, but now it totally makes sense. I mean, her mother was with her father based off of what she said, Ariana fixed my life because of the money she dealt with a lot of nonsense sense and her father had a lot of money and he manipulated because he had a lot of money that's a revelation that Iana made to Lisa Ray on the show so that can possibly you know possibly be why she's been all over the place with these men you know she dated married the Turk and Caicos guy and then she had this reality show with this guy I don't even know his name I didn't do full research on him because I'm like okay so who is this guy that she was supposed to marry so yeah um, and then we see that if she don't fix the problem, it will definitely trickle on down to her daughter and her granddaughter. But not only her, I found some interesting things about DeBrat also, because we know that back in the day, not that long ago, DeBrat was constantly in jail and always in fights and stuff. And then based on my research, well, somebody had mentioned that DeBrat used to date Allen Iverson. And then I did some research and said and found out that she used to date Kirk Frost. But get this, people. It said that she dated Kirk Frost because he bought her a car. Specifically, that she was on the Ricky Smiley show and she mentioned that she had dated Kirk Frost because he said that he was going to buy her a car and he bought her a car. I said, what the hell? And if that don't sound crazy enough, because to me it sounded crazy. I was like, the brat dated Kirk Frost because he bought a car. Anyway, I found an article from April 13, 2016 from BET that said... The brat's ex-boyfriend, dad, David Geis, guess whatever, is most famous for marrying who? Liza Minnelli. But in 2006, he was also the boyfriend of 90s rapper and reality star, The Brat. Many people question how legit their relationship was, but by judging by the smooch fest, the two clearly felt something for each other. Sadly, David's dad at the Four Seasons Hotel in London, he was 62 years old, allegedly guess Geis, David, whatever, was abusing sleeping pills and taking steroids for pneumonia. The brat whose real name is Shante Harris has not released a statement about her ex's passing. I said, really, bitch? Really? 
bitch. So do her father like the young tenderonies? And she like sugar daddies? I mean, look, and then considering the fact that right now we know that she's in her lesbian relationship and she's dating the owner of the Miracle Drops, Judy, whatever, and we know Judy got a lot of money. Look, people, we don't know how much David Ray McCoy spoiled all his girls, spoiled all his children. We don't know what he did for Le um, for, for the brat, too, and what she was used to. Ain't no telling, but to me, that was pretty damn interesting. A lot of folks in the comments were talking about this is not real um this is pre-produced and i'm so glad you cleared that up this is a hundred percent this is your life this is what you oh picture. i didn't see those comments i just saw people uh, talking about it already when the trailer came out but i will say this um with all the work that i had to do with her beforehand and, and I, I won't say with her it's with her team mm -hmm. it's months of preparation it's months of homework of who are you? Who do you think you are? How do you think? What do you do in this situation? We had those, we had interviews, we had research, we had sat with, uh, via Zoom, we sat with um, a counselor, like, it was real. Mm. We did all of this before we got a chance to sit with her. And then we did one big interview, individual, of uh, questions that was just for us, about us. And I assumed that Iyana looked at those so she can see what and how we told our stories and what the issues were. Right. And so when we collectively came together for the first time, it was the first time all four of us sat down. My mm -hmm. daughter, my mom, myself, and Iyama. Mm -hmm. And it was it was it was real because I had the same hang up. I was thinking, Lord, don't let her say something out of the way. Because right. South Side Chicago gonna rise up and it's gonna be all bad. In here. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't want to mess with the South Side, okay? You don't want to mess with yeah. the South Side. Um, but one thing that kept that under control is that I knew I came in for help. And she said that, you know, as resistant as we were, she said, well then, if y'all didn't want no help, and if I can't help y'all, what y'all here for? And it was like, right. Okay, Since okay. we are on the topic of Iyana Fix My Life, remember just a few weeks ago when Shay Johnson was on her show and then Shay Johnson walked off and there was this whole thing on social media where Shay was saying that she felt disrespected and Iyana treated her a certain type of way. Well, right after that, she went on social media and had a conversation with Nefertiria. And remember, Nefi had been on Iyana's show twice with her husband. And remember that Nefi is the sister of Keisha Cole. And so Nefi didn't like her experience because she got called a gutter snipe on the show and she didn't like none of that. So on this conversation that she had with Shay Johnson, she was expressing how she felt about Iana and the show. And actually, considering the things that Shay Johnson said about Iana, she had her own feelings about the show too. So check this out. On the show twice. Oh, I didn't know you were twice. on the show. Um, it's certain things that were said that I was like, so you're supposed to be uplifting and encouraging and giving um, the, the people um, the empowerment to express their negative and their positives. You, you're, you're not supposed to direct their negative and their positives. It was almost, I felt like it was like she was trying to pull it out. And I'm like, I ha I, I, I released that already. So you want right. to open your own wound so I can release again? That's the part of the rate. That's where you get the ratings when people like lash out and, and bark and, well, hold right. on. Like, I really so, didn't expect her to say certain things. So I'm like, damn it, why did she say that? Now, you have to remember prior to you go on, so and I think this is why she's not um, going back is because a lot of people, um, the narrative and 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 how they perceive the show to be is not what it really is. Okay. Meaning, meaning, and I'm a, I'm one hundred. Meaning, if you say you tell them your whole reason why you're going to be on there, right, and mm -hmm. why you are trying to get things together. But then you take what you're trying to get together and take it and turn it into ratings. Pretty much. That's how I felt. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like honestly, Nephi, if I would have known that it would have that it would go the way that it went, I would not have brought my family because these were real situations. Like I know other people right. have you know different and worse situations going on in their life. I understand that. My thing is this is what's going on with my situation. And if somebody can help us, let's try that because we've never tried anything. It it, it wasn't all bad for me, Nephi. It wasn't all Let me bad. Tell you, I'm gonna say this. I am divorced right now. I've been divorced seven years. I went on this show with my husband at the time to save my marriage. It did more torment than healing. This woman, let me tell you, what people don't understand is this woman called me she said, Nephi is a, a gutter snipe straight up out the hood. Oh, wow. Which made me get up, walk off the set, so I can respect my elders. Which you should have did. Set. Oh, no, no, no. Nephi, you walked off set. Good for you. I walked off set, too. Got in the car and drove away. She made them turn around and bring me back so she can cuss me out. And I'm like, mm -hmm. dang, it's like I'm talking to me. Oh, it's, it's, no, it's really and then I went, back, I went back again to make sure that I was not tripping <laughs> without look. I, made, I was like, okay, no, I got to go back because I know I ain't tripping. Right. And I got the same results. Yala can't fix that. Well, we just well, well we decided to see y'all gonna have to y'all gonna have to go on y'all own retreat. Y'all need to take y'all. No, we are. We are like we decided to actually go as a family yeah. and find a therapist and come together. And and yeah. honestly, my brother and his wife they see a therapist on their own. MJ decided like it's nothing like it really opened my my mind. Like I really want to see a therapist, but I want to see somebody yeah. that's not too much so aggressive you know what i mean i want somebody that would listen but still tell me what 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 am i doing what am i doing wrong why is my thought process the way that it is how can i fix this with my mother and my brothers and you know what i mean i really want to see somebody so we're on the right path it opened the door we just couldn't get through it but we, it opened the door like now i see yeah. what i need the reason why i played you know? that clip yeah. is because iana kind of gets a lot of backlash sometimes because people feel like that she goes too hard and i don't think that she's going too hard the whole purpose of the show is to make you go deep inside and talk about some things that she know that you wouldn't ordinarily talk about that's why she lets the people know on the show that you may not like me there may be some times on here that you may not like me but you need to trust the process so we heard Lisa Ray, what Lisa Ray had to say, that there is a whole process and things that they went through for months before they even got on the show. And she said that even she had to realize that, you know, what's the purpose of coming on the show if you're not going to be willing to go deep? And then there was this whole situation with Shay Johnson and how she felt about Iana and this whole hoopla on social media. But then when you listen to this little clip this conversation that she have with Nefertiria, you hear that she actually got some things out of it. Now, I cut some things out because she said that when her father watched it, he felt a certain type of way. He felt like he should have been there. Now he feels like he want to have a conversation with the kids and speak to them. And she says she don't know what he's going to speak about. She gets some things that he had never told them before. She says that she's going to go to counseling now. And it definitely has opened up the door with her family. So it wasn't all bad. Now, I think Nefertiria had her own type experience experience because she didn't want to go deep with it and when Iana called her a gutter snipe Iana explained that and even I got what she was saying because she specifically said that Nefertiria is a total different person so Nefertiria wasn't a gutter snipe but this Nephi this whole persona this attitude that she takes on as this Nephi person now that was a gutter snipe and I just think the Nephi did not want to hear it she didn't want to try to understand at all what Iana was trying to say, but the crazy thing is that I actually interviewed her husband. In 2017, when Nefertiria and her ex-husband Shelby Laurie was on Iana's Fix My Life for the first time, I had him on my show because I wanted to 
see how he felt about it because I had actually heard or at the end of the show, I think that it said that they wasn't together anymore. So I was very interested. And when I talked to him and asked him about the behind the scenes of Iana Fix My Life, he kind of sort of almost said the same things that Lisa Ray said, that it was a process and he felt like and he said that it was a lot of praying and things going on behind the scenes. And he wished that they would have showed more of that on camera. But check this out. I'm going to start off by asking you, Shelby, is how long was the taping for when you were on the show? It was four days. Okay. Four okay. Days. That was four days. Okay. Four and, days. and who decided to go on the show? Um, they reached out to us first. And when they reached out to us, you know, I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Uh-uh, nah. And Effie was like, yo, we should just go on there. I said, you know, I, I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I didn't want to do all that extra stuff. And at, at that time, we was going through a lot. But I prayed about it, and I asked God about it. And, and God asked me, you know, I mean, not asked me, I'm sorry, told me to go. You oh, know, man. so I, I did it on that. <laughs> That's the reason why I did it. You know, and that's how we ended up on the show. Okay, so why do you think that they reached out to to y'all? So do you think that they knew about the things that y'all were going through, or? I, me, me and Nephi, you know, at the end of the day, we celebrities, so. Right. You know, and the, and the same producers that shoot different shows shot Nephi in uh, Frankie's last show. Okay. And um, they had kind of seen things going on, you know, that we weren't transparent about. Uh, in that show before Atlanta Van Dance. So they just felt like we'd be a great couple to come on there. So how do you think that your experience was now that you was on there? So when you look back at it, do you feel like you got something from it? I mean, my experience from that whole thing, it was it was spiritual. Okay. You know, a lot of, lot of you know, we've done a lot of TV. And that wasn't a TV show. That was more like a ministry. Right. You know, that, that whole, her whole team, you know, it's people that you wouldn't even kind of believe, like mm -hmm. people that she picked up along the way and um, it was going through hardships and it meant through marriages and, you know, homelessness and all of that. And that, that's her whole team. Like, and she just got a big ministry. And, you know, people think it's a TV show. But over there with her, it, it's not. It, it's, it's a straight ministry. Mm -hmm. So my whole feeling about being on there was at first I was reserved. Right. Kind of like standoffish, but I was going through so much at the time and understanding what was going on, I just became very, very transparent to the whole process. Okay. And do you think that she helped out with that song? Because she seemed so compassionate and so understanding. So do you think that that helped out with you being transparent? Uh, like I said, it was more the prayer. You know, I guess they don't show that on TV. It was more the prayer that made me. That made me be like, you know, this is a safe place. Okay. You know, it was it was the prayers that we had. And the people that she had there praying for me and that you know, we did a lot of prayer there. I don't know why they didn't show that part on T V, but they do a lot of praying while this while that process is going. I would like to know how you all feel about this situation and why you are letting me know. Could you please like and share this video and subscribe to Geneva's Closet if you haven't already done so right here on YouTube. And you can follow me on Facebook at what? At Geneva's Closet. And you can email me at Geneva's Closet 22 at gmail.com. You all have a fabulous day and I will talk to you later. Bye.